This is actually a true life story, and it first appeared in Proceedings, which is a magazine of the Naval Institute. This story is told by Frank Clock. Two battleships assigned to a training squadron had been at sea on maneuvers in heavy weather for several days. I was serving on the lead battleship and was on the watch of the bridge as the night fell. The visibility was poor, with patchy fog, so the captain remained on the bridge, keeping an eye on all of the activities. Shortly after dark, the lookout on the wing of the bridge reported, Light bearing on the starboard bow. Is it a steady or a moving stern? The captain called out. Lookout replied, Steady, captain, which meant we were on a dangerous collision course with that ship. The captain then called to the signalman, Signal that ship. We are on a collision course. I advise you to change your course 20 degrees. Back came the signal. Advisable for you to change your course 20 degrees, the captain said. Send. I am a captain. Change your course 20 degrees. I am a seaman. Second class, came the reply. You had better change your course 20 degrees. By that time, the captain was furious. He spat out, send. I'm a battleship. Change your course 20 degrees. Back came the flashing light. I'm a lighthouse. We changed our course. Stephen Covey says, like lighthouses, principles stand rock solid and they can guide us. In this rapidly changing world where it seems there are not many things we can solidly rely on, principles are ageless and foundational. They have a guiding property, like the evening star that sailors could rely on to show them the way. In this story by Frank Cock about the battleships, the captain jumped to a conclusion a little too quickly. So take a moment and pause this for right now and ponder, have you ever jumped to a conclusion a little too quickly? And what were the results? Paradigm is the way we see the world, not just visually, but how we perceive the experiences in our life. So our perceptions are really influenced by our mental map and experiences and knowledge from our past. I'd like to illustrate this with just a quick story. I lived in Brazil for a little while, and while I was there, my brother, who's younger than me by seven years, was learning to drive. We lived in a home, or my parents rather, lived in a home that was built in 1906 with a single car garage that was located just a little behind the house. Not by far. Because of this, the driveway had a little bit of a twist as it came out. One day while getting ready for church, my father tossed the keys to the family car and said to my brother, back the car out, son. As he was backing out the car, he misjudged the turn just by a little bit hitting the spigot on the side of the house. Pretty soon, water gushed straight out the side of the house and was drowning everything. Of course, it could be heard inside the house and my parents quickly ran outside. The accident had to be fixed, the water had to be fixed. My brother went to church with my mother while my father stayed home and fixed this. And my mother tells the story that my brother, who is not a very touchy-feely boy, sat with his arm tucked behind her and that he cowered next to her in the pew of the church, concerned about what was going to happen next. As I lived in Brazil, I received stories about what happened, not just from my brother, but from each of my parents and even a couple of my younger sisters who lived at home, and each of their experience was different. One of them talked about the house being knocked off the foundation, another about how bricks had to be repaired or the water gushing in different ways. One told the story from the point of view of the neighbor who had stood outside and was getting wet by the water. So their perceptions were all different of the same experience. Not one experience was better than another. They were simply different. So we want to look at how our experiences and our mental maps, our knowledge, which is that paradigm, is really inflicting, influencing, and changing our perceptions. 
So a paradigm shift then is the way that we change. It's a course change and it's a change of your attitudes and it's a change of your behaviors. I love this story that Dr. Covey shares about a paradigm shift and he shares it about a passenger. He says that there was a man on a subway who was, had children that were completely out of control. And he said, Dr. Covey says this, that all of the passengers were just simply furious at the father. Finally, Dr. Covey himself spoke up and asked the man to control his children. The man replied and stated, I guess I should, but we just left the hospital where their mother just died. All of a sudden, Dr. Covey, he really did change, didn't he? He had that paradigm shift. His attitude toward the man changed. He had greater sympathy, didn't he? And his behavior changed. So as you look at this, I want you just to pause for a moment and ponder, what can you do to challenge your assumptions, your behaviors, and also those attitudes that you have? In April of 2008, Dieter Uchtdorf shared this story. In 1979, a large passenger jet with 257 people on board left New Zealand for a sightseeing flight to Antarctica. They wanted to come back immediately. Unknown to the pilot, however, someone had modified the flight coordinates by just a mere two degrees. This error placed that aircraft within 28 miles or 45 kilometers to the east of where the pilots assumed they would be. As they approached Antarctica, the pilots descended to a lower altitude to give the passengers a better look at the landscape. Although both were experienced pilots, neither had made this particular flight before, and they had no way of knowing that the incorrect coordinates had placed them directly in the path of Mount Erubus. Mount Erubus is an active volcano that rises from that frozen landscape to a height of more than 12,000 feet or 3,700 meters. As the experienced pilots flew onward, the white of the snow and the ice covered the volcano and blended with the white of the clouds above. It made it appear as if they were flying over flat ground. By the time the instruments sounded a warning that the ground was rising fast toward them, it was simply too late. The airplane had crashed into the side of the volcano and killed everyone on board. It was a terrible tragedy, and it was brought on by a little minor error, just a matter of a few degrees. This matter of a few degrees is important to everyone in their lives as we look at our goals and where we want to be. Think about it. How did these few degrees make a difference for the pilots and the passengers on this trip? And what difference can a few degrees make in our own journeys? We need to know where we're going and what we want to do and make course corrections as needed in order to reach our goals and to be able to be successful in this life. What value does a paradigm have for leaders? Understanding a paradigm leads to a better understanding of oneself. A leader can have more compassion and understanding for others as they recognize that people may have different paradigms, different impressions, and different views. It also is going to increase communication and the ability to communicate with one another. Understanding paradigms is also going to build relationships of trust and community. So why would I put paradigms under a foundational principle instead of under visions or goals? Simply because as we move forward, we want to encourage and challenge our thinking. We want to do this from the very, very beginning. Remember that our vision controls our perception and our perception controls our reality. What do you think it means that your vision controls your perception and your perception is your reality?